All right, an attempt at a quick video on the subject of gravity, uh, an alternative to believing in bent space, which I can't draw because it's a non-existent, invisible, fake force that somehow causes an effect with absolutely no physical mechanism defined at all. No real energy in, no real energy out, just some sort of make-believe, God-done-it kind of answer. Uh, the alternative would be is that, um, you know, what we understand gravity to be is essentially a um, problem where... Uh, it seems uh, like it's violating a rule, okay, but it's only a rule in a general sense uh, that more of stuff seems to push in than pushes back out. That's the simple explanation for what gravity is, is that uh, somehow more goes in than comes out of objects, and therefore you, standing on the surface of the object, if you could do that, if the object is big enough, will experience the differential. You'll experience more hitting you in one direction and hit you in the other direction <clears throat> and as things tend to do you'll move accordingly <clears throat> so this simple theory would be is that we have this uh, basic understanding of kinetic motion that no matter what size i make two objects let's say i hit object a uh, into object b um, the simple argument would be is that the motion of a is exchanged that a just drops dead here it doesn't go any further and b continues the journey at some speed commensurate to its size uh, you know, if they were the same size, it leaves at the same speed. If they're different sizes, different masses, carrying different amounts of momentum, then there'll be the exchange commensurate to that mass. <clears throat> and so that's the common understanding is that uh, energy dies. Uh, it gives its full measure of devotion to whatever it interacts with, and then that entity carries it along. And a simple deviation from that model would be to understand that matter is, um, has no will of its own and that it is, in a sense, just pushed around. So you can think of it as bulldozers and boulders. You know, boulders don't roll unless the bulldozer's pushing them, kind of thing. And it's a flat earth. There is no hills to roll it down and all that kind of stuff. So the bulldozer's not pushing it, the boulder's not rolling. That's the simple theory. So when force interacts with matter, it doesn't bounce off, it doesn't drop dead. It just keeps trying to go where it's going, and it just has to do it pushing the boulder. So if the the pusher, the force, just understand this is about force and matter, two different things. Force is moving the speed of light, matter moving whatever the force tells it to. And the idea is the pusher could be going 30 miles an hour uh, when it's free on its own, just flying around, but when it has to roll a boulder, okay, it's got to push that mass, and therefore it goes a lot slower. It goes, say, um, 15 miles an hour or 20, let's say 20 for fun, 25, just to understand that it doesn't kill all of its momentum, it just kills the part that it's slowed down by pushing matter. So the matter moves 25 miles an hour, that's a differential of five miles an hour that's going to be lost, um, you know, pushing. Now you can understand now if another bulldozer comes along and hits this one, another boulder hits it, that this boulder would fly off and this one would fly off and they would just reflect. So that kinetic still works. Uh, Newton's cradle, if I drop two at the same time, they just bounce back up again. So you get the equal and opposite reaction of both forces negating and then the boulder just stays where it is. Uh, and that's basically the universe. So you could understand that in this <coughs> uh, mechanism, just with that simple change to the idea of full kinetic exchanges, if you understand that they're being pushed, that is in fact a push universe, that everything's being pushed wherever it goes, um, everything going slower than the speed of light um, is pushing, is pushed. Uh, and it's pushed by forces, and all you're doing is really just saying which side pushes more, and it's going to go whichever way. But the idea would be is that while... Uh, the force, okay, uh, the force, <coughs> we'll make the force into a bulldozer. Um, <clears throat> while the force is rolling a boulder, an electron or a proton, it's moving slower. And by moving slower means the force isn't doing other things. So you can just understand it as a length of a line argument that <coughs> if the bulldozer is not pushing anything, this is where it ends up in five minutes, let's say. If it's got to push something, it's only going to get here. Okay, so you can understand that while it's pushing something, um, there's clearly a difference in how much distance it can cover, which would arguably be uh, commensurate to the fact that it has lost momentum. So by losing speed, by compromising some of its speed, um, it compromises uh, how much distance it can cover, and however you look at it, that means it has less momentum. Either if you want to think about it going slower because it's pushing the boulder, or you want to think about it going less distance, it doesn't really matter which one you use. It's the definition of momentum is uh, traveling distance over um, amount of time, and that will change when it's rolling a boulder. So the idea is just that simple that you actually do lose some energy in the absolute universe when 
any of the bulldozers have to push stuff around. So the universe would look like, you know, the simple argument would be the universe without boulders would look like this. Okay, you know, a bunch of stuff moving all around. Activity, lots of activity. If I put boulders in the universe, then it's, less, it's got less in it. Just because it has less time to make the lines. The line can't be as long because the universe has to have lost some energy because less stuff, there's less movement. There's less distance covered by the force. Therefore, the force has to, by definition, carry less momentum. So matter consumes momentum. And you can clearly understand it in the context of if I did have this scenario where you have a force <coughs> force, and you have a boulder, and the two forces you know, actively move the boulder from point A to point B. You know, I'll put A in the wrong place just to illustrate the point. The point is, is it's going to push it this way, and then it pushes it back this way, and then it pushes it back this way. You can sort of understand it ends up back at the same place. The universe doesn't change. So the force has clearly got to move slower to push the dang thing. And then, <coughs> um, but in the end, it doesn't get it anywhere. It just ends up being in the same place as it was. So you can clearly kind of understand that nothing changed in the universe, and I definitely took some energy out of the bulldozers. They wasted some time just going back and forth, tug of war kind of thing. It's just wasted sweat, wasted energy. And that's why there's gravity. Now, the consequence of having a real force instead of magic forces, you know, of having real physics instead of magic physics, is that there, there's side effects. And the side effect in this case would be drag. Um, and I'm not going to go into a complex explanation of how you overcome that, but I'll just give you the clue that drag really exists because electrons and protons, un unlike the general uh, notion, you can't shoot them forever. You can't throw an electron into space and expect it to get anywhere. It does drag to a halt. The same thing for protons. And the only thing physics has any evidence that can actually travel through space is something called a helium nucleus, <clears throat> which is more than one electron and proton uh, with a neutron involved, which is an electron and proton. And frankly, it gets into a configuration that allows it to fight against the drag. That is, the more you compress it, the more it pushes back because it has force stored inside of it. And so you, it's like bringing two ping pong paddles closer and closer together with a ball bouncing between them. It can, it can moderate the force it pushes in a direction based on how much pressure pushes the paddles together. They'll respond, and the, the helium nucleus is capable of doing that. So you can give it an orientation. You can point it in a direction, give it velocity, and it'll fight the drag. It'll fight the principle of drag, which I didn't state, um, which merely just states that if I am rolling a boulder, I am likely, I'm likely to plow into more bulldozers coming this way, more force coming towards me than away from me. So if I'm moving in a direction, obviously the stuff behind me has to catch up to me. Okay, and, if I, and the stuff I'm moving into, I'm going to move into a lot more of it, and that would be drag. But drag isn't directly equal to the other force, because you can sort of understand that how much drag I'm going to get hit by isn't instantaneous. Drag doesn't happen immediately. And by not happening immediately, it's always going to be less than the initial force. But anyway, I don't want to go into all those details. I'm just giving you a mechanism to explain gravity, why there are, <coughs> why it is a fact that anything that contains moving matter any object that has matter moving in different directions, and the Earth has plenty of that, um, molten, you know, uh, <laughs> inside, um, anything that has jiggling electrons and protons is creating gravity, okay, because it's consuming a force that was going the speed of light, jiggling uh, boulders of matter. And by wasting that time, uh, they've lost momentum. And the fact is, you'll have more force going in then force coming out, completely dependent on how many bulldozers wasted their time going, you know, for, for the example of you, it's the bulldozers going this way that are wasting their time. And for the guy down here, it's the bulldozers going this way, you know, the force, uh, wasting its time pushing matter that are going to create the gravity. But that's what it's caused by. That's a real answer, a real mechanism, real physics, a real explanation versus the fairy tale of the magical, bent, geodesical thingy, the blank, the nothing, the undescribed, un, the non-mechanism. If I was electron, how would I possibly see bent space? What's bent? <laughs> what is, space is supposed to be nothing. How am I supposed to see that it's bent? Come on, it just doesn't make any sense. It's a God of the Gaps answer, and if you uh, like science and like getting right answers, you won't fall for that one because it's a really crappy answer. And such.